Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory be to Yahweh. Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Racha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great most on the rule world, and blessings to the hopeful elect are they teaching this word in all sincerity and truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And speaking of lambs, I actually want to go into you know, a video concerning animals, specifically, you know, sheep, lamb, um, you know, and revolving around the birth of the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose name is Yahweh Shai, all right? And Christ is just a title, all right? Which basically means the anointed, okay? And Yahweh Shai is his actual name, despite the fact IUIC um, saying that you know, the Lord's name is Jesus to Christ and, you know, which we hate saying that word. But for edification purposes, we have to tell you, oh, like the scripture says, mark them that cause divisions. And in fact, let me get that scripture real quick. All right, let me get that scripture, Romans 16. Because <coughs> I was watching a video from Elder Apostle to her in response to um, the IUIC, was it IUIC Dallas, I believe? And they were being questioned about... Um, you know, other sheep that I have which are not of this fold um, by the so-called black woman. And then she actually threw a question to them. She's like, well, you know, what's the, basically, what's the right name? Because you guys basically talk about, you know, they call her on Jesus. And then I think one of them interrupted and said, you know, Jesus, you know, and then he mentioned Yeshua and Yeha come on, man. And then he said, these are all titles. No, Yahweh Shai is not a title. Yahweh Shai is his actual name. Okay, Christ is a title, all right, which means the anointed, but his actual name is Yahweh Shai, which is a nomen omen. This is Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So we've got to avoid these people and we've got to mark them. You know, when you go into that word mark, <clears throat> the word mark there is... Um, uh, should be Scorpio. All right, Scorpio. All right, which where you got the word scope in there. This is to look at, observe, contemplate, to mark. All right, to fix one, fix one's eyes upon, direct one's attention to anyone, to look to, to take heed to thyself. So we're supposed to, you know, fix our eyes upon those that are causing division, are contrary to the doctrine that we've learned. You know, basically we put the scope on them, we mark them out, all right? And then we tell the congregation to pretty much avoid these people because they're teaching things, you know, direct, uh, in, in direct contrast to what we're, you know, that what we've been taught from our elders and our apostles, all right? Which is, um, you know, the truth, okay? And this is why we do that, all right? And going back to the Lord's name, I just wanted to get Matthew 1, all right, because um, Yahweh Shai has a meaning. All right. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, which the word there should be Yahweh Shai. All right, for he shall save his people from their sins. All right, and the letter J didn't even exist. All right, during, during a time of Yahweh Shai. Okay. In fact, the scriptures even tell you that there was a... Um, uh, inscription or uh, uh, Greek. Let me see if I just put in and Latin. See if it will come up by just typing this. Yep, this is uh, John chapter 19. Now, these, this is what was. Um, uh, in fact, let me just read it from verse 19. John 19 and 19. All right, this is uh, during the time of Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai got crucified. Okay. And it says, And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title then read, Many of the Jews, for the place where Yahweh Shai was, was crucified was nigh, unto, nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. All right, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. 
All right, and why was it written in Hebrew? Because Yahweh Shai, he himself is a Hebrew, a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. How do we know that? The scriptures tell us in, um, I believe it's even in Hebrew. <laughs> it was a Hebrew 7, 7 and 14. For it is evident, it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Yahweh, all right? Because there's no such thing as the letter J, okay? Um, until Renaissance language came about. The letter J didn't only come about until what, 1524 by John Trasino. All right, so the word there is Yahawada, okay? Which even, you know, Yahawada goes back to the name of the Lord, okay? Because uh, Yahawada or Judah was a son of, um, of Leah, I believe. And she named her son Yahawada, which means thank you, Yahawah. Oh, Yahweh, thanks. Okay. So it says, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, or Yahweh. Okay, so that shows you what tribe, you know, Yahweh Shai is from. Okay, from the head tribe of the nation of Israel. All right, but the point is, back in John 19 and 20, why was his title, or his name, okay, and that the the, uh, the uh, what was written on the cross, all right. The title. Why was it written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin? Okay. Because the point is, you know, it was written in Hebrew, right? Because you would have had the Hebrews there, uh, Hebrew Israelites. Okay. Of obviously that spoke Greek as well, and then you had Latin. Because remember, it was during the time of the Roman Empire, and what did they speak? They spoke what Latin, right? Okay, in the Hebrews for the Israelites. Okay. And get and remember, this was after the time of the Hellenization period, because remember you had the Greek Empire that came before the Roman Empire. You got something called the Greco Roman Empire. Alright, and during the time of the Greek Empire, what were they speaking? Greek. Alright, you had the Hellenization of our people. That's why you got the when the scriptures tell you that Timothy's father was a Greek. Alright, what does that tell you? He was a he was an Israelite that didn't know he was an Israelite. All right, he basically followed after the Greekish customs. Okay, so that's why the title was written in the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. All right, so this is what we have to know here. We have to know a little bit of this history, man. We've got to go into this. All right, and I pray this is making sense. So anyway, going back to um, Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. And this is what his name means. Yahweh Shai means he... The deliverer. That's why it goes on to say, for he shall save his people from their sins, which is a nomen omen, okay? Name prediction or name sign, if you will. That's what his name means. Okay, and what's Yahweh Shai coming back to do? Is he not coming back to save his people? Starting with the elect, all right, from, you know, from this captivity that we're in. He's going to come back and save us, all right? So that's why we mark them that cause divisions. Now, I want to go to the core of the lesson and I ain't going to make this super long. I just wanted to, as I was sitting here, I was just reading through um, a little bit of Luke. And um, I came across um, Luke, the second chapter. <clears throat> and I want to go straight to verse seven. Um, and this is going to be about the birth of Yahweh Shai. Because, you know, you got that pagan holiday coming up known as so-called Christmas. You know, where you got people, you know, gathering around, putting presents underneath an obelisk. Um to pretty much take part in these stupid festivities or these wicked pagan rituals, um, which we, we've got our own, own high holy days, which, you know, which is righteous according to the scriptures. You know, you've got Purim, you've got Hanukkah, you've got the Day of Atonement, you know, we've got the Pesach, you know, the Passover. You know, these are our high holy days, man, okay? According to the scriptures, but you see Esau, he's pretty much, you know, he's pushed his, you know, uh, paganism on our people and you got our people that are pretty much uh, learning after the ways of the heathen all right this is a uh, jeremiah chapter 10 all right because you got a lot of people thinking that the, you know the birth of the lord was was during around this time period you know december so-called december the 25th all right which is um you know this time period i think you got from december so-called 17th the julian calendar you know, from 17th to the 23rd, you've got something called Saturnalia, all right? Which when you look up Saturnalia, which we can get that, um, 
It's nothing but pagan, you know, involved human sacrifices. It's nothing but pagan rituals. Okay, and people would, you know, give gifts to one another. They'd be merry hearted. And, you know, they'd have feasts and eat and drink, but they'd, they'd have sacrifices around this time period. So it's a very, very dark time period indeed. You know, and, um, and Lord willing, you know, something major happens during this time period. All right, because it's um, one of their most um, biggest high, unhigh holy days, if I'm going to put it, I'm going to say it like that, that they, that they have during this time of the year. All right. So this is Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. And this is, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So we're not supposed to be learning the ways of the heathen, okay? Even though, you know, we, the, the, as pertaining to the curses, you know, the Lord said he was going to scatter us among these nations. <clears throat> and there, there we were going to serve other gods of wood and stone, all right? But the Lord is, you know, is starting with the elect. He's woken us up out of that. All right, and we're not supposed to be learning the ways of the heathen. You know, we're supposed to be putting that, especially when you know you're so-called born again. You know, we put those things away, okay? And then you wake up to the fact that you're an Israelite. You wake up to the fact that you have your own high holy days, you know, and um, um, holy customs, you know, to be following, rather than these heathen pagan rituals that you be getting involved with: birthdays, Christmas, Halloween. It's all paganism, man. All right, and the Lord's gonna put a stop to all of this shit, okay? And the Lord, he, you know, it's good to speak about the Lord, how he despises them feast days, man. Okay. Uh, feast days. Let me just get that. Uh, this is a, it should be in a, um, let's see. Um, I'm not smelling your solemn assemblies. Let me see. I know somewhere, something, it might be in, is it in Amos? Yep, Amos chapter 5, verse 21. All right, it says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Okay, in fact, let me read it in the NLT, verse 21. It says, I hate all your, all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. You see that? Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice and an endless river of righteous living. So this is what the Lord is not happy with all of this, man. All these pagan rituals on the left-hand side. He's not happy with this at all. Okay. These people are out here, you know, that. <clears throat> and here and here it is. We're in 2023. You can't even see any so-called uh, Christmas lights on anyone's homes these days. All right, you're lucky if you see uh, one house lit up on a street. When I say lucky, so-called. If you see one house lit up on a the street these days, man, because the mirth, the Lord is bringing the mirth of this place down. You know, and that's a fact. That's in um, Isaiah 24. All right, it's good to speak about all the merry-hearted do say. All right. So, um, yeah, the Lord is bringing this mirth down. So let's go back to Jeremiah 10 and, tw and 2. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. All right? So we ain't supposed to be getting dismayed at the signs of heaven, especially when we see them chariots. All right? Because when them chariots show up, you know, these heathen, they're going to be perplexed. All right? Shit, you're going to have even Israelites out there that are going to be perplexed. They're going to be dismayed because they're not looking for Yahweh Shai to come back in the fashion that we're telling them that he's going to come back in with a so-called UFO, a gigantic so-called UFO. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're waiting for. So those of us that are in the know, you know, the day of the Lord is not going to come upon us like a thief in the night and leave us dismayed. Okay? Rather, we're going to be cheering them on. We're going to be hoping that the Lord has mercy on us you know, to beam us up into that gigantic so-called UFO. And that's what we can't wait for. All right. But going back to this, uh, you know, pagan uh, so-called Christmas, it says, for the customs of the people are vain. All right. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. And that's what they do, right? And we went into this at the camp as well, you know. Um, how do you know, you got people gathering around a tree and, 
You know, they might have uh, food cooking, you know, abominable foods cooking in the oven in the background, pork and shit, lobster, shrimp. All right. And then they're gathering around. They're wearing these stupid, colorful, um, you know, uh, Christmas sweaters with a Santa hat on, you know. And they're standing on their little kick stools, putting up fucking tinsel around the tree, like looking like, you know, gold and silver. All right. Hanging little naked babies off the tree, little golden bells and shit, sticking a star on the top. Simple as hell, man. All right. And they don't even understand that it's pagan. All right. So this is what the Lord is, is, is pretty much cursing this out because this is what they were doing. All right. It says they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. <clears throat> they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Yeah, because they're dumb idols, man. All right, the scripture says all the gods of the nations are idols. Okay, it says they must needs. It says, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Yeah, because they're just they're just idols, man. All right, they're not living. We worship a living power. Okay, his name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, we can actually communicate with our power. We can actually pray to our power and he will listen and he will intervene for us. But you see, these gods of these other nations, man, you know, they ain't going to intervene for them. All right, you got Jake mixed up with that. When all hell breaks loose, they're going to call upon these idols and ain't nothing going to be happening for them. All right, it's Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27. Saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. Right, didn't the Lord say that we're going to worship gods of wood and stone? Okay, you got, you know, the wicked of our people, they're going, you know, marching around Carver stones, talking about taking a trip to Mecca and all this kind of bullshit. All right, they're praying on these false gods. Okay, it says, and to a stone thou hast brought me forth, for they have turned their back unto me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, arise and save us. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. So let's see where these, where these so-called gods of yours are going to be. You know, and we have, you know, we have, you know, we're well within our <coughs> rights to, to snap on these false idols and curse you out for worshipping them. Just like our forefather uh, Elijah did when you read in the book of Kings. All right. When he's snapping on the, on the gods of the other nations, man. Okay. Because I believe there was a time when there was like a... Or he told them to dig a ditch and fill it with, with water and put wood on it and in this in this ditch, you know, and pour water on it. And he said he was going to consume, call fire down from heaven and consume that wood. All right, and it was like a competition. Let's see who's got it stronger, you know. And I don't need to tell you, you know, who won that competition. All right, because we worship a living power. And Elijah, you best believe he called upon Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And Elijah was snapping on their gods. He was saying, look, where is he? He's going for a nap. Is he going for a walk? You know? So we're well within our right to snap on these people that worship these other, these other gods, these false idols. <coughs> All right? That can't speak. They're dumb, deaf, and blind. All right? So let's, um, let's go back to Luke chapter 2 now and 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son. And, and I know I'm kind of all over the place, but I just had to... You know, segue into that just for edification purposes that we ain't supposed to be worshipping, you know, the gods of these other nations, man. These false idols, okay? And this head, what I'm about to go into is going to cut the whole fact that these people out here, they kept, you know, they, they said that they're worshipping or they're celebrating the birth of our Lord, all right? Which they believe is around this time period, so-called de December 25th and that, when the scripture that has no December the 25th, you know, uh, mentioned, from Genesis to Revelation. There's no December, there's no mention of Gen uh, Gen uh, December the 25th. There's no mention that, the, the, that our Lord was born in the winter. There was no mention of that. Okay. In fact, Yahweh Shai, in fact, he was actually born, right, in the spring. Okay. He was actually born in the spring and spring represents life. This is Luke chapter 2 verse 7 And she brought forth her firstborn son And wrapped him in swaddling clothes And laid him in a manger Right Because there was no room for them at the inn all right? Or in the inn Alright And they were in the same country And there were in the same country Shepherds abiding in the field 
and keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, well, why, were they, why were these shepherds keeping over their flock by night? Now, I wanted to go into this because I found this pretty interesting, all right? Because um, I just wanted to, you know, as I, was, I said, I was reading through the book of Luke and I wanted to, um, you know, um, shed some light on the fact that, you know, these shepherds were keeping over, watch over the sheep at night. So I typed in on Google, as you can see at the top, shepherds kept watch over sheep at night. It says, how do shepherds protect their sheep at night? It says, most days in ancient Israel, shepherds let, uh, led their sheep to graze the nation's pastures and drink from its streams. At night, okay, however, the shepherds took their sheepfold, okay, <coughs> sheep, uh, the sheep into the sheepfold, um, and the walled structure topped with brairs to protect the sheep from thieves and wild animals. It says, why were the shepherds watching their flock by night? Now, this is even in Google here. And this is telling you that the, the birth of the Lord wasn't quite in the dead middle of winter, man. Okay. They're even going to tell you right here. Because you've got something called lambing season. And I'm going to go into that as well. I remember that was one time, you know, the apostles were going into the main camp. They were talking about lambing season, which I'm going to Google I haven't actually got a tab of it pulled up, but I'm going to Google it after this, Lord willing, if I don't forget. All right. It says, why were the shepherds watching their flock by night? It says, ewes are basically helpless when giving birth. Okay. Now, the question is, is when do these uh, lambs, when do they start to give birth? Okay. During the springtime. All right. It's called lambing season. It says, so the shepherds stay with them to see that newborn lambs are dried off and kept warm during that first cold night. And why would it be a cold night? Because in the beginning of spring, you have that transition from winter. Okay, so it's still cold. At nighttime, it still gets cold. Okay, but in the daytime, you know, it warms up, you know, the sun shining. You start to see the leaves budding because it's, it's a time of life. Okay, but at the nighttime, it still gets cold. So one might say, oh, see, this is a cold night. See, that was, that was the winter. No, it's talking, it's spring. But even in the springtime, remember, you, you have a transition period from spring, from winter to spring. Okay. So it's still going to be cold at nighttime. All right. And it says, and that's why they were keeping watch over the flock. The shepherds were keeping watch over the flock by night because newborn lambs, would be, would, you know, would have been being born at that time. This is one of the most important benefits of Luke's notation is that it suggests in the, the general time of Yahweh Shai's birth, the spring of the year, the spring. So they're even telling you that our Lord weren't even born dead in the middle, middle of winter. No, he was born in the spring. Okay. So that's a cut, man. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in um, uh, lambing. Lambing season. All right. Lambing season. It says traditionally lambing starts in early spring. OK, but some farmers in the south can start it in December, while others, while others uh, further north in April. OK, but look what it says right there. It starts. Uh, it starts in early spring. And what's early spring? The transition from winter to spring. OK, that's early spring. OK, when you're making that transition from one season to the next, the coldest season, right, to the season of life, which is spring, you know, you have them cold nights. And this is exactly why you would have had the shepherds, OK, which we're reading in, all right, in verse eight. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. Why? Because they would have been guarding the newborn lambs that were being born. All right, because they needed assistance. OK. So this just further proves, you know, the point that Yahweh Shai, you know, you know, he was not born in so-called December the 25th, man. All right, let's see if we can get any more on this here. It says the traditional lambing season. This is what months are the lambing season? The traditional lambing season is from March to May. OK, come on, man. That's the traditional lambing season. All right, let me see this. Let's see what this says here. Uh, <sighs> month to month, it takes five months for a lamb to fully grow, and develop inside 
You know, and you know, you take this with a pinch of salt, you know, obviously, you know, you got to pick the bones when you read these things. But the traditional, the traditional uh, point of lambing season is in the springtime. All right. And it makes perfect sense because the springtime that represents life. Okay. And furthermore, we even know that um, even when you go back to the book of Genesis, because we know that Isaac, that was Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Shai, Isaac came back as Yahweh Shai. Okay. Because uh, reincarnation is biblical Alright And um, One of the angels even told Sarah That when she was gonna You know Give uh, Give birth Sarah laughed Okay In fact uh, Let me see if I can get this one here Yep This is uh, Genesis chapter 18 And Um Let me start from the top. It says, The birth of Isaac promised, all right? And the Lord, Yahweh, appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. All right, appeared unto who? Abraham, okay? And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground, which them three men represent three angels, okay? And said, My Lord, if I now have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, a calf tender and good, and gave it to the young man. And he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? Now this is the point. All right. And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Now, why did this individual say, I, I will surely, he said to Abraham, I will surely return unto thee according to the time of, time of life. All right. The time of life represents what? Spring. All right. And that's how we know that, you know, Isaac, because remember, it was in verse 10. This is the birth of Isaac promised. That's Yahweh Shai. Okay. So if you're spiritual, you will understand. All right. So it says, and he said, surely I will, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, thy Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. All right. And she pretty much laughed because she was up in age. All right. And then when, you know, when you read it yourself, the angel pretty much said, well, why did Sarah laugh? All right. And she denied it. She said, I didn't laugh. But no, the angel said, no, you did laugh. And that's, therefore, she called his name Isaac. All right. Which means laughter, which is, again, a gnomon omen. Okay. What does Isaac mean? Laughter. All right. But the point is, he said, I will return unto you during the time of life. All right. Now, what season represents a time of life? Spring. Okay, in fact, we can even type that in. What season represents, represents life? There you go. What are the seasons of life? Mood. Although all emotions occur in all seasons, we tend to connect spring with hope slash renewal. You see that? Come on, man. <coughs> so the time of life represents the time of spring. All right. And how else do we know that Isaac was Yahweh Shai? Okay. It's because um, even when the Lord told Abraham, my forefather Abraham, to sacrifice his son. All right. Did Isaac not get laid down on the, on the wood? All right. And did not the Lord provide a, a, a ram that was caught in a thicket? 
Okay? See, these are the things, you know, that we've been taught by our elders and our apostles over the years. And it makes perfect, perfect sense to us, man. And you have to be spiritual to understand these things. And if you don't understand these things, you just ain't going to get it. All right? And I said all of that just to say this. Look, man, Yahweh Shai, you know, he was, um, he was born in the springtime. Okay? He weren't born in no December the 25th. Okay, that got, again, it goes back to pagan uh, festivities, all right? And I mentioned earlier, Saturnalia. Uh, you got something called Saturnalia festivals, all right? And this is what that time period in December goes back to, all right? Um, it says, uh, Saturnalia is an ancient Roman festival, a holiday in honor, in honor of the god Saturn, okay? Held on 17th of December of the Julian calendar and later expanded with festivities through to the 23rd of December. The holiday was uh, celebrated with sacrifice at the temple of Saturn. Alright. It was celebrated with, with sacrifice, man. Alright. What was they doing at this, um, you know, this temple of Saturn? Let's see if we can get anything on here. What we can do is we can just type in um, if we type in um, let's see temple of Saturn sacrifice. Let's see what comes up. <coughs> what did Romans sacrifice to Saturn? Right at the Temple of Saturn, the uh, official rituals were carried out during, uh, uh, carried out according to Greek rite, uh, right, uh, ritus gracius or gracius. The sacrifice was officiated by a priest whose head was uncovered. In Roman rite, uh, the priest sacrificed capiti vilato with head covered by a special fold of the toga. Um, let's type in. Let's see what they do, human sacrifice is happening. It says, human sacrifice in sources of the 3rd century AD and later, Saturn is recorded as receiving dead gladiators as offerings, Munera, during, near, during or near the Saturnalia. These gladiatorial events, 10 days in all throughout December, were represented or were presented mainly by questators or quaestors and sponsored with funds from the treasury of Saturn. All right. And they said they sacrificed pigs and stuff. Um, uh, the Roman uh, were human sacrificed during Saturnalia. The Roman historian Levi even records a human sacrifice during Saturnalia. So it says victims were slain at the temple of Saturn in Rome in order to muster favor with the gods during the second Punic War uh, following the military success of, Han of Hannibal. So this is what they're telling you. All right, what this really goes back to, man, human sacrifice. And you got people out here, you know, worshiping, um, you know, Christmas and so on and so forth. It's all pagan, man. All right, which, you know, you can go deeper into it if you want in your own time. But I just wanted to do that just to make the point. All right. Because like I said, I was reading through the book of Luke and um, I was just moved, you know, to do a video on this. Because since we're coming to that time of the year, you know, to shed light on the fact that, you know, the Lord, you know, was born during the time of life, which is spring. OK, so with that, you know, I pray this was edifying, you know, um, just a little quick video there until the next time. Shalom.